Hello, I'm Roger Smith in Chillicothe, Ohio, and this is uh, the second in a series of video reports on my large Tesla coil. Today we're going to talk about what exactly is a resonant DC charging Tesla coil and how it's different from your more common AC Tesla coil. To start with, we'll review the AC Tesla coil here. This is a simplified schematic of an AC Tesla coil using a neon sign transformer like this one down here. The neon sign transformer charges up the primary capacitor over here and once the voltage gets high enough the spark gap breaks down and fires uh, which closes your primary circuit you have uh, AC high frequency oscillations in your primary circuit that then couple to the secondary coil giving your, your, your discharge. One would think that once the spark gap fired you'd have a short circuit across the neon sign transformer but uh, the spark gap fires and quenches very rapidly and the neon sign transformer has a lot of inductance to it plus it's current limited so it it doesn't uh, short it out in any sense. Going back to our DC resonant charging Tesla coil circuit here as you can see if we didn't have this uh, charging choke here we would have a direct uh, short circuit between our spark gap and our voltage doubler circuit and if the spark gap would fire it would short out uh, that capacitor there and uh, uh, all your power would be gone so uh, in this case we we use the charging choke so we don't have an AC transformer with a lot of inductance uh, like you would in an AC Tesla coil uh, just to, to get it, uh, why we call it a DC resonant charging Tesla coil, the idea is if your charging choke has just the right amount of inductance uh, when your primary capacitor is charging, the timing wise it would work out to where uh, just before your rotary spark gap make to where the thing would discharge your current would stop flowing into the primary capacitor and once it fired it would start flowing again and that would be your most efficient way of operating uh, in practice uh, the value of the charging choke uh, inductance wise can be much higher than the theoretical resonant value uh, which would mean your current flow would tend to be relatively constant uh, I've experimented with a lot of different values for the charging choke and uh, it all seems to work out about the same uh, and as long as your charging choke is of a fairly high value another thing I want to point out is you don't really need this diode here uh, that's something I've had in there to experiment with for different using different values for the charging choke the idea is once your capacitor charges up uh, if the current flow stops you don't want it to flow back the other direction in case your spark gap doesn't make by then uh, that's about all it does uh, but it's uh, really for the most part unnecessary uh, unless you're going to experiment with low inductance values on your charging choke 
Here's the charging choke I use. It's about 10 Henry's. Uh, the minimum amount of inductance I need to make this coil work is about 5 Henry's. But the important thing is this can withstand a very high voltage. Uh, it has to be comparable to what the uh, primary capacitor can withstand. As you can see, uh, my safety gap, which is a uh, across directly across the choke winding is uh, about one inch and if I set it any closer than that it will fire so this thing sees a very high voltage each winding is well insulated from the previous winding on it I wound this thing by hand and I got plexiglass spacers in there to keep it from arcing over onto the core. When I first built this resonant charging Tesla coil, this is what I used for my charging choke. The secondaries of about 10 microwave oven transformers all connected in series with each other. Uh, the primary windings not connected to anything. The secondary of a microwave oven transformer has about 18 to 20 Henry's of inductance uh, so I had way more inductance than I needed uh, but it, it took a lot of them to get to be able to stand the, the high voltage uh, involved uh, this worked just fine in fact uh, running it this way I can't tell any difference uh, with this and with the new inductor that uh, you just saw a little while ago. I'm going to conclude by very quickly going over some of the advantages and disadvantages the DC resonant charging Tesla coil has to the AC Tesla coil. In the AC Tesla coil, your high voltage transformer takes some abuse from your Tesla circuit and that's why we put in filler chokes and safety gaps. Whereas in your DC resonant charging Tesla coil, your charging choke takes all that abuse and everything downstream from that uh, doesn't really get any abuse at all particularly if you have a big capacitor here. One problem with having capacitors in the uh, Tesla coil circuit of course though is when you power this thing down them capacitors still hold a charge so that's a that's a safety issue you gotta worry about. You gotta make sure those capacitors are discharged before you work on it. Uh, both coils work about the same performance wise. Uh, it largely depends on what you can get to make it out of as far as what way you go. Uh, that's about it for now. The, the next video report I think I'll go into detail on how I made my charging choke.